Welcome back. Time now for news from the left in Florence, Italy. Climate change activists are begging for a beatdown in the worst way. The last generation movement decided the best way to get their message across about global warming was by spray painting the walls of the iconic Palazzo Vecchio in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Florence's mayor, Dario Nardella, and some local officers, though, jumped in and stopped them. And thankfully for that. You can see the mayor highlighted coming in from the left. That's the mayor over there. He grabs one of the vandals, pushes him, shouting, tackling these morons as they should. It should have been even worse. The mayor even stuck around to help the locals clean up, being hailed as a hero now. The last generation are a group, a group of uh, purported climate activists that have history of destroying historic artwork and landmarks. They're basically the ISIS of climate change. Last year, the group hurled paint at Milan's La Scala Opera House. Most famously, they were responsible for chucking pea soup at a Van Gogh in November. Artwork worth more than any of their miserable lives. Climate activists are going to find themselves very isolated if they keep this kind of nonsense up. And the people who brainwashed these Nimrods so that they can fly around private and get rich, people like John Kerry and Al Gore, deserve to be in prison. It is enraging to see some priceless works of art and some of the most beautiful things in this world destroyed by these clowns. Moving on, Minnesota's first transgender lawmaker is now USA Today's Woman of the Year in the state of Minnesota. I hope you are ready to get used to seeing a bunch of dudes as Woman of the Year in every single place that they honor women, because that's what we're going to see for the next several years. Uh, here was uh, Lee, Lee Fink's message uh, after she won this prestigious award. You want to ban gender-affirming care for minors. And, and what you want to do is you want to make sure minors never grow up to be me. And you can say it's for children. I, I, I'm, I'm very unsettled by the, the repetitious phrase that we are messing with, with kids as though this is some new experimental... Uh, it's... it's it's not new. It's neither new nor experimental. No, Lee, it, it is rather new when you, you know, start giving, what, hysterectomies to like eight-year-old girls? That's a little bit new, I'd say. And all of that nonsense that he just said completely ignores countless cases of confused kids who transition because their parents are crazy, and then when they grow up and figure out whatever the hell they had to figure out, they end up transitioning back. And so they go from boy to girl, back to boy, or girl to boy, back to girl, except now they have completely mutilated bodies. Because when they were seven, people like Lee Fink said, oh, you feel different? Well, let's just take you over to the clinic and have everything chopped off. Kids aren't even allowed to have credit cards or buy cigarettes until they're 18 years old. But people like that want to let them choose to just eviscerate their body when they're too old to even figure out whether or not there's a Santa Claus. Right. But none of this is new, she says. Yeah. Next up, woke ice cream maker Ben & Jerry's uh, said that selling ice cream in Israel was inconsistent with its values, but according to a new class action lawsuit, using child labor allegedly is not. According to the New York Times report from last month, 100 migrant kids ended up working in dangerous jobs, including at least one milk supplier at Ben & Jerry's Vermont supply chain. So you have migrant children working to get the milk for Ben & Jerry's ice cream. The Times story detailed kids as young as 13 working 12 hours a day so that Ben & Jerry can have the biggest house in all the land. Historically, Ben & Jerry's has made social justice a key part of its brand. In 2017, immigrant farm workers signed on to Milk with Dignity, a campaign overseen by the Burlington-based nonprofit Migrant Justice. Uh, in Israel, the attempted occupied territory boycott in support of Palestinians was seen as an anti-Semitic because the company never boycotted any other region of the world where atrocities had taken place, or I should say alleged atrocities had taken place. And it cost the company a lot of money, despite the founders, Ben and Jerry themselves, being self-proclaimed proud Jews, which of course they are not. There's nothing proud about these guys at all. There's the, the West is full of self-hating liberals pretending to want to destroy our society to cleanse themselves of their capitalistic sins. Ben and Jerry are no different. 
they say all of these things, they make all these maneuvers, but at the end of the day, I'm sure they really like their pile of money and they just want to be left alone.